Morning everyone, Nick here from Meat Smoke Fire and I'm joined by David from Spice Punch. All right. Um, we're going to do a joint cook today, a um, little bit different, I'll turn that way so you can see him in the background for a minute, but uh, yeah, so um, David's going to do most of the cooking and we're doing it because he does some amazing dry aged um, beef as well as some other things, but we'll talk to you about that as we go on. Um, so I've invited him to come and do some of the cooking, so he's going to do his whole menu. Um, so I'm going to nip behind the camera uh, this week. So. Um, I am the camera person this week, a bit different. Um, I'll flip the camera around and over here we've got Helena on the keyboard as usual, struggling today. Um, don't know what's going on there, you might have to type on the screen Helena. Catherine, David's wife and David here. Right. So, um, so um, yeah we're going to do some dry aged beef so do you want to tell us a little bit about what we're going to cook yeah absolutely so just to get a little bit ahead of time we are we already have our meat on the barbecue at 110 degrees doing a reverse sear it's a 150 day dry aged piece of sirloin so we did the entire short loin massive 17 kilo piece um butchered that up a few weeks ago and this is one of the really nice pieces that we thought we'd bring along today do you want to show people what's yeah, going on? Yeah, we'll have a look. So just running about 110 degrees Celsius. Yeah, I'll zoom in and show people. So we're doing a reverse here, uh, a bog standard reverse here. Okay, so this is the piece of sirloin. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, we're using the meter just to keep an eye on temperatures. Uh, and a little tip that we like to do. Normally you see people kind of putting their meters in this way, but when you cut the steak later on, you get a small hole from the thermometer. So if you put it in this way, when we slice it later on, you shouldn't have that hole in the meat. So nice, nice little tip for people. Brilliant tip. I learned that this morning. Love it. I'll be using that going forward. So the other thing we've got on the go is some charred onions or dirty onions cooked straight on the coals. So we'll use these a little bit later on in the dish. And I'm also going to do some dirty chilies. So I'm going to pop those on now Ooh. just to blister up, char up, and we'll come back to those in a bit. Perfect. So yeah, we've done dirty onions before. Uh, we did them, I think, on the week we did fajitas. So it's same technique, but we're going to use them in a different way today. Yeah. So one of the sides that we're doing, we're doing two sides to go with the sirloin steak. We're doing a charred hispy cabbage, also known as a sweetheart cabbage. Um, so we're going to do that next, get that prepped. Um, so this is a bit of a beast. We don't need all of this. So we're just going to remove the outer layers. Um, just tidy it up a little bit. You can still use these, but for presentation today, I'm going to leave them off. There we go. Uh, maybe this one. Yeah, looking good. So when you get these from uh, Tesco's or Sainsbury's or whatever, what you'll often find, I'm just going to move these out of the way so you can, I'll put it there. So you can just see them a little bit better. But what you'll often find is that you just see this conical shape, this ice cream cornet shape almost. Um, so yeah, that's what you're looking for. Okay. So then this can just go straight down the middle. And for presentation later, I'm gonna do, because it, it's quite large, I'm probably gonna do this into quarters. Imagine that on a plate, it's quite a bit, quite a bit big. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll quarter that one. And again, you want to try and keep the stem on. So again, just remember not to take that out because that's going to hold the whole thing together. So we'll do these two and we'll do this one. Lovely. Then what we need to do is to parboil these. So obviously if you're at home, you'd probably do it on the hob in the kitchen. But seeing as we're at Meat Smoke Fire HQ <laughs> and he's got a hundred barbecues, we might as I don't, well... I don't think we've quite got a hundred, but we've got a few. <laughs> you might as well parboil them on the bar. So we've just got a big pot of boiling water in there. There we go. So they'll only need two or three minutes. We'll just leave them to it. Spot on. Okay. Right, we've got some iced water here and... Um, Tell us a little bit about this beast. Yep, so again, <laughs> we, um, 
thought we'd bring along when when your butcher offers you some wagyu steak at a good price you've got to take it so we got a whole sort of new york strip uh, or a big section of sirloin if you like um and we thought let's try and pimp it up a little bit more and we've done a whiskey aged dry aged wagyu uh, section so this is just one of our 42 day whiskey dry aged sirloins that we might uh, try in a little bit okay but so how do you age that how what's the process with the whiskey so what's the, the process with your aging chamber tell us a little bit about that yeah so like with dry aging you're basically releasing the natural moisture from the steak and intensifying the flavor so the bigger piece you can do the better because you'll have less waste overall um yeah the, you're kind of controlling the decay of the steak if you like now that might sound a little bit weird um but it's basically a really controlled environment where you're allowing all those all that enzymes to work you're releasing moisture you're intensifying flavor and it just produces this like wonderful flavor so we bought a professional dry ager about a year ago and we've been playing with that doing 28 days 40 days 60 days 120 days the one obviously in the barbecue at the moment is 150 days uh so nearly five months worth of uh, worth of aging so for some people that probably sounds disgusting we'll see what nick and helena think today <laughs> it should be pretty delicious absolutely um, i mean we've had we we so I, I think i may have told this story but we got our our christmas um i'll flip round while we do this so um we got our christmas um get you all in there our christmas um uh piece of beef and i asked miles at the gogs to to age it for me so it was put back into a muslin muslin bag uh and put into uh their dry aging freezer uh, or fridge sorry uh for an extra six weeks so it already had two or three four weeks and then we put in for an extra six just to develop that flavor now in there they got a little bit of mold on the outside so when we opened it uh with the butcher at, at the gogs um helena's face was an absolute picture with this fluffy furry piece of beef she goes god and i took loads of photos of it and she said whatever you do do not show those photos to to my mum so <laughs> carolyn if you're on and she probably is uh yeah she never saw the photos but she wouldn't have eaten it if she'd seen it um but it was absolutely stunning now david's got a much more controlled environment i think um and looking at the photos of his steaks, it's uh, a lot, uh, a lot uh, cleaner, less less uh, mould going on the outside, less fur. Uh, it's all good flavour, and you should have smelt this piece of beef when we opened the packet. It's just delicious. So, yeah. So again, yeah. our dry age is quite small. Obviously, in a butchery, you've got the door opening and closing all the time. You've got fresh meat coming in. You've got meat that's hanging. Whereas ours is kind of like a, a giant fridge, but it's just for sort of our personal use. So it never really gets the door opened. Um, we can control the humidity and temperature really, really closely. So if anyone's looking at it, we, we kind of have a 75% relative humidity and we have it sitting at 1.1 degrees Celsius. And then you can flex between uh, temperatures, humidities. So again, stuff like white mold, it's, it's fine. It's the same mold you'd get on cheese. You know, you see a little white mold on cheese, it's the same as dry edge beef. If you had a black mold or a wet looking mold, you, you've probably got a problem there. You, you might want to take a closer look at things, but white mold essentially is penicillin. So it should be, it should be pretty good. Okay, I'm going to flip the camera back and we'll get a look at that cabbage, I think. That's probably been two or three minutes, hasn't it? I think so. Uh, so I'll take this steak out. You've got lots of water in there. Oops. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not used to doing the camera either. So, uh, yeah. So we've part boiled this, just blanched it really. Yeah, How that it, seems fine. Yeah. So then, just to stop the cooking, you just chuck it in some ice water, which is rapidly becoming not ice water because it's so nice and warm today. Again, I'm not a massive fan of cabbage, but I'm a massive fan of this dish. Okay. And you know, later on, we're going to put like a chili oil, some pistachios. Um, a few different things on it and it's just going to really transform it we're also going to properly char the cabbage so it's going to look a little bit black a little bit burnt but seriously it really gives it a, a nice flavor that char i think there's quite a few vegetables like cauliflower you know you really 
transforms the flavour when you've added an intense heat to it. What about those chilies? Yeah, let's go and have a look at those. Might need turning and yeah. we've got enough heat in there. Let's have a little look. So the onions are still kicking along. So I'm going to get in and have a little look. Probably turn it up a bit, couldn't we? Yeah. This is what you're oh, kind yeah. of looking for. Yeah. So you're waiting for the chilies to come. Oh, that one looks amazing. Limp. So yeah. this one's fine. I'll just put that to one side. Whereas these two, they probably probably do a little bit, a little bit longer. Okay. I'm going to flip the steak as well. I know it's a reverse sear, but seeing as we've got the barbecue open, I might as well just give it a, ch a chance to. And you'll see it. Uh, being a reverse here, it doesn't look a lot different from when we put it in there. So, um, you know, th the first part of this is going to keep it, just bring up that temperature slowly. And then the second part of this cook uh, will we'll, uh, uh, we'll then put the sear on it and it will uh, make a big difference at that point. So David's just opened up a little bit of the top. So we've got a little gap there. Um, obviously, we're way down because we've just opened a little hot air out. and We've got a, about a centimetre at the bottom, something like that. So, Perfect. So the next thing we'll do, um, we need to toast some pistachios. So that's going to go on top of the um, cabbage later on. Okay. So as soon as this has got a nice bit of heat, heat on it. it. Okay. Yeah. Just need to burp it. Yeah. It's warm. Take our pan out. Oh, yeah. Just stick it on the table. That's fine. <laughs> I got that on camera. Yeah, of course. <laughs> One takes always challenging. <laughs> You're doing great. So we'll just give that a couple of minutes to toast up a bit. And let's have a little look. What's the temperature of the steak? 39. 39, so with the steak, we're bringing it up to about 50 degrees. So it's still quite rare. Um, ultimately, I wanted about 55 to 57 for medium rare. Um, with reverse sear, obviously you're taking it off at about 50 degrees Celsius. It's gonna go up a little bit from the residual heat that's within it. Um, but at the end, you really crank up the heat, throw it on at the last minute to get a nice crust on it. Um, and that'll just bring the final temperature up to hopefully a medium rare finish. Okay. Okay. Chilies. Let's have a look at the chilies again. <laughs> Can you talk through what a reverse sear is? Yeah. Okay. We'll talk through that. So the question we've had, uh, what is a reverse sear? So, um, so essentially when you've got a nice big, uh, chunky piece of steak. Um, so you'll see this one is pretty thick and those chilies are looking fab by the way. Um, it's pretty thick. Um, if you cooked it, uh, and I'll spin the camera so you can see me and David. Um, if you cooked it in a normal way, uh, just by on a hot barbecue, what you'd do is you'd end up um, having the outside really well done and the inside less done, um, but you don't get a nice cook all the way through. Now with a reverse sear, what we're doing is we're cooking it really slowly. So we've got our egg here at 110 degrees. Uh, so we're cooking it nice and slowly. And that brings the whole, the temperature of the whole piece of meat up nice and slowly. And then you can take it off and we'll take it off about five degrees, a bit more maybe before the temperature we want it. So we're going for medium rare, about 57 degrees. So we'll take it off a little bit early um, and we let it rest. Then we'll turn the barbecue right up. Uh, and by doing that, we can then sear the outside. So you get a lovely crust on the outside, but the inside is going to be done to whatever doneness. And I don't even know if that's a word, and I always say that. We're going to do it to whatever doneness we want. So we're going for a, uh, a medium, medium rare. medium rare here. Um, so that's what a, um, a reverse sear is. And, the, and this recipe is linked on the, on the page, and all the recipes today will be linked on the page, and it explains that in the recipe. Again, with, with something like a dry edge steak, like 150 day dry aged, it is a, it's, it's weird. It's, it's very quick to cook. It's not dry by any means. It's got really nice loads of juice in it. Um, should be nice and tender, but it does tend to cook a bit quicker um, than a regular steak. So you'll hear me shouting at my, uh, my wife, Catherine, just to get a temperature check because it might just peak uh, very quickly. Okay. A couple of questions for you. Yeah. Would you reverse a reverse sear a fillet? Yes, you could reverse. Uh, so the question was, would you reverse sear a fillet steak? Absolutely. 
Um, although fillet steak, not one of my favourites, there's very little flavour in fillet steak. Um, it's lovely and tender, but being one of the, uh, the cuts of meat that does the less, the less, least work, less work, least work, um, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't develop flavour as much. So what you tend to find is that the piece of meat that do the most work, the front leg of the animal, the bit of the animal that's holding up the neck while it's grazing, um, those tend to be the more meaty bits of meat and the bits of meat that do the least work and the fillet is one of those it's one of the only muscles inside the uh, rib cage it does practically nothing it doesn't have as much flavor but yes it would really benefit from a reverse sear one one thing i quite like to do as well is it gives you the opportunity to add a bit of smoke you know a bit of smoke wood flavor into your steak as well you didn't remind me we were going to do that uh, that's yeah. right. <laughs> the, the big green egg charcoal has got a nice flavor yeah. on its own but you can play around and introduce some extra flavors um if you take a big bunch of herbs you can whack that on as well and it will just give a bit of an extra flavor so obviously like nick said earlier with a normal steak if you just do it kind of hot, hot and fast um fantastic delicious but this method just gives you a bit more time uh, to play with a few extra flavours and introduce a few different things. Okay, question. Should I Hang on a sec, I've just seen a, uh, had one here. Has Nick had a lockdown haircut? <laughs> Ask Lexi. Ask Lexi. So um, yes, Nick has had a lockdown haircut uh, this morning on the patio. Uh, that's why we were a bit frantic today. But yes, Nick's had a lockdown ha haircut. Thanks to Mrs. Meek Smoke Fire. Thanks to Helena. Uh, should I bring the meat to room temperature before cooking? I'll let David answer that one. Uh, I usually do. So bringing it up to room temperature, basically it means that that whole piece of meat is all at the same temperature. If you take it straight out of the fridge and whack on a bit of high temperature, um, it's basically the, the actual piece of meat's at different temperatures. So you might have it more well done on the outside and pink on the inside. Um, but yeah, give it, that, give it that opportunity to relax, come up to temperature, then at least the thing you're cooking is all at the same, all at the same temperature. It should give you some nice, even results. Yeah. With reverse sear, again, maybe it won't matter that much because you're bringing it up to temperature slowly anyway. But uh, personally, I would. Good. I, I'm the same. Yeah. For, for, for a steak, uh, I'm just going to get in and show you these pistachios. We get a nice little bit of char on those. So bit of a wiggle um, but yeah for a steak that you get a thinner steak yes for things like um, where you're doing uh, brisket or pulled pork I definitely take those directly out of the fridge and straight onto the egg uh, and that's because they take on smoke better the smoky flavor better when they're cold and wet um, so the longer they're cold the more smoke they're gonna take on so I would take them straight out of the fridge how are we looking yeah, good. Go for it, Helena. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, so, what temperature reverse sear for the medium or well done on a ribeye? So, medium is going to be 62, well done is going to be 67 degrees. That's the finished temperature. So, if you want to uh, do this technique, reverse sear, then I would take them out five degrees before that um, and then. Um, uh, and then you'll get the last five degrees while you sear them. So, uh, right. And what cup of steak do you think has the most flavour? Ah, <laughs> go. I'll let you go for your your answer, and then I'll answer. Or do you want me to do it the other way around? Well, I'm ha I think there's there's some really good flavoured steak. So, like stuff like hanger steak, skirt steak has an unbelievable amount of flavour in it. Um, if it's like a high-end cut, then something like a ribeye for me is probably the one that I'd go for. Totally agree on that. Um, again, like so something like a T-bone's quite good, porterhouse, because you'll get a bit of sirloin and a bit of fillet if fillet's your thing. It could be a gateway steak, you know, it might tease you out of that fillet and into the sirloins. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and a great, a, yeah, hanger steak, anglet, um, another name for it. Um, uh, beautiful steak, it comes from, uh, I'll flip the camera while David's doing this bit, but it comes from the, um, uh, the diaphragm area of the cow. So uh, it sits near the liver and the kidney. So it's got a lot of flavor, for, for, uh, flavor in it there. Um, so, you know, I like that. Um, 
but as I said, some of the, the cuts from the shoulder of the, the animal will have a lot of flavour in. So we did a, a feather blade the other day. Uh, so feather blade comes from the shoulder blade. Uh, lovely cut of meat. Um, yeah, absolutely delicious. So try these different cuts. Get to know your butcher. Um, uh, get to know your butcher and they... You're right, yeah. <laughs> um, sorry. I can see what's going on in the background. It's distracting. <laughs> Um, but yeah, get to know your butcher and they will advise you. So, you know, if, if, for those of you in Cambridge, go and see, you know, someone like the Gogs. For those of you in Bedfordshire, go and see, yeah. um, I'm going to flip the camera. Yeah, What's so his name? Uh, we've got an amazing butcher in Sandy called Jake Alsford, JS Alford's master butcher. Uh, he does all of our dry aging steak and sources that for us. Because again, you've got to be really pedantic with the meat that you're getting. You want it as fresh from slaughter as possible. You want good marbling, you want uh, good traceability. All the stuff we do is grass fed. And you know, I'm probably a real pain in the bum because uh, when we do a piece of dry age, I'm like, can you do all these 12 criteria? And he always delivers. So yeah, big shout out to Jake, he's a, he's a good lad. And I've just seen Ben, the farmer who uh, joins us every week on his tractor. Uh, I think he <laughs> hopefully he's finished harvest now. I don't know, he was he was cutting the, cutting the what was it last week? Wheat or corn or barley or something. Uh, but he's a Bavette fan. Um, oh, yeah. Love it. You can't beat it. Yeah, Bavette, fabulous. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do like a bit of Bavette. Any other questions, Helena? No. Okay. I have to share a little bit too much information with everyone, but they're all having a Oh, what have you shared with them now? Your outfit for your haircut. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for that. These two, these two here don't know, but I sat in the garden in my pants. So thanks. <laughs> so I'm just, just trying to bring this bit of cast iron up to temperature. So the other side, as well as the, uh, the cabbage, is going to be like a, a white bean mash. Um, so we just need to get the cast iron heated up a little bit. I might pop it on the other one. Yeah, you can do that. We were trying to do a cook all on one, but um, the, it's easy when you've... Uh, it's much easier to do a cook on one egg and using the expander system um, when you've got... Um, are you all right? These, these are definitely a bit too much. Oh, yeah, they're a bit, bit too much. Can we get some more? Uh, yeah. So that, we're, all, we're all human. We're all human. We always do it. They're in the cover. So we're going to get back to get some more pistachio. So, uh, yeah, that oh, doesn't matter. These things happen. So that's, that's what happens when you take loads of questions. Um, do you want to... I'm going to pop this, otherwise we'll have a... A circular thing. Do you want to? No, this one. Oh. Gonna move on to the... Yeah, that's cool. Oh yeah, you've got a thing on. That's all right. Um, yeah, so um, we'll get rid of those. We'll start again. Um, but yeah, when you ask lots of questions uh, while you're cooking, you often mess these things up. So um, yeah, the bin's over here. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's all I've got this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the weights and measures are variable. You know, whatever you've got in. <laughs> whatever you haven't burned. Yeah. Right, Catherine, you're on pistachio watch. How long do you want? Two minutes. Uh, two minutes is yeah. fine. Be plenty. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how are we doing on our steak, Catherine? Uh, three minutes left. Oh, perfect. All right, that's good. Uh, is that my coke there? Yes. Yeah, perfect. Okay, I'm just going to add a bit of olive oil into the cast iron. Ooh. That is kicking out some heat. Yeah, you can turn it down, it's been up at 220, 230. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's quite good. Yeah. So. Were shelled, weren't they? Uh, yeah, they were shelled. Yeah, they were a packet uh, from Sainsbury's. You can get them really shelled. They're not cheap, but they uh, they work. No, it's a, oh, don't worry about it. Hey, I've not done it on camera yet, but uh, well done. <laughs> Is Paul on? <laughs> Paul White, there you go, Paul White. Things do go wrong. So uh, it's a friend of mine down in Devon, the one I was talking to you earlier about with the, with the nice uh, uh, houses. Um, High Park Barns, if anyone wants to look it up. Um, you can rent 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 his barns uh, just outside Biddeford. Um, but yeah, we're talking. Paul always pulls me up on my timing and reminds me of stuff. So we, we we're blaming that one on you, Paul. You didn't you didn't remind us about the pistachios. Okay, so <laughs> uh, basically, this is some shallots that we're going to add in. Good. 
then we're going to add in some garlic. So it was about two or three cloves or and three about, cloves. these were little round shallots, not banana shallots, so probably four round shallots. Um, yeah, and uh, two or three cloves of garlic. Ooh. Yeah, it's going fast. Yeah, it is. You might want to, wow. <laughs> That's right, we'll give it a second, I'll just give it a bit more. Yeah. Making him work for us. Yeah, we've got those, thank you. Yeah they're pretty much done so that's the color we are looking for just a little bit of a, a toast on them so i will let that cool down for a I'll second pull that down yeah just uh yeah put it on there that's perfect i'm just gonna keep an eye on yeah this. just watch that it's a bit of a beast there you go so it's getting a bit of color already so i'm then going to add in some beans so these are cannellini beans but basically any any kind of white bean will do Any idea when Spice Punch will have more stock? Ran uh, out. Yeah, it's... Um, <laughs> so Spice Punch is like something that we do on the side, you know, it's a bit of fun. Um, but actually I work for the NHS and with all things COVID, it's been a, a bit intense at the moment. So unfortunately our Spice Rubs have taken a little bit of a back seat. Hopefully we'll produce some more later in the year. It might be next year. Um, yeah, it's just been a bit of a mad year and a bit of a, a wild time. So it's nice. It's, thank you for asking. That and was from Neil chasing. Lawrence. Cheers, Neil. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll get up and running again a bit later in this year. It's just uh, yeah, been a bit of a challenging time. Neil's local, by the way. So uh, yeah, he comes on the cooks most weeks. He gets a lot of grief from his brother, uh, who also comes on the cooks and is up in York. So, okay, so all we're going to do now is just add some stock. I think this is just a simple vegetable stock uh, to the beans. Oh, that is hot. It is really roasting. Yeah, I might want to <laughs> get the lid shut and, oh. Right, so we'll let that simmer for a little bit. Yeah, I mean. Shut the lid a bit. Catherine, how are we on steak? Oh, we're getting close. Those onions are probably done now. Yeah, I've tricked you here. I've, I've, this is this is just slightly wonky. So if you pull it, <laughs> that's better. There you go. There you go. Set him up. <laughs> I knew it all along. We could probably do a little longer on that one. Okay. What do you reckon? I think for the you know that one's probably done. Yeah, people, done. people at the other people at the other end of this have no idea, <laughs> so uh, they can't they can't touch and feel it. So uh, if you think it's done, it's done. I'll say it's done. That's the tricks of the camera. It might not be perfect, but uh, uh, I think that'll do. Yeah, yeah. Again, they should just be nice and soft. You can see the onions coming out from the skin. So these are all little clues to tell you it's pretty much pretty much ready. So someone's just asked, when did you start the steak? Uh, so we put it on about. 10 minutes before we started this morning yeah it's taking about 30 minutes uh maybe 40 minutes in fact um uh so yeah but you know you've just got to roll with it um we're going to rest it so it's going to be ready in a few seconds yeah we're at 48 degrees we're aiming for 50 so it shouldn't take too long uh, i've got those pistachios now so i'm just gonna put them on the chopping board they've cooled down a bit and we're gonna dice those up so on here. Sorry if your camera skills aren't up to the usual. Um, I'm trying to drink Coke and video, which is not a good combo. Yeah. yeah. There's no right or wrong way, you just want to break them up a little bit. The only wrong way is if you cut yourself. <laughs> Don't say things like that on camera, that could happen. <laughs> it wasn't that knife that my sister-in-law cut herself with. Lovely. Okay. Guess those cannelloni could have a, a little bit of a stir as well. Yeah, I'm going to have a little look at them. I think the steak's ready to come off now. Yeah. So let's have a little look. 
No, you're good. We'll just give these a little bit of a whiz up. Oh, Ooh. Ooh, that was a bit hard. <laughs> Come on, burp it, man. I know, I know. <laughs> That's looking nice. We're going to mash this up in a, in a few minutes. They're looking good. Yeah, they look nice. Get this olive oil out of the way. I might be able to see more. How about that? Yeah, that's looking nice and uh, nice and soft. I might give it a couple more minutes just to thicken up slightly. Okay. I'll move it over to this side because there's more coals over there. Yeah, you can see it's, it's a bit hot. We had this uh, cooking that, uh, boiling that water, so I cranked it right up, and now we're suffering for it, <laughs> literally. <laughs> uh, should I pop the steak on here? Yeah, I've, I've got some foil for you. Uh, it's there. So you can just uh, rip a bit off. So as you'll see, the steak doesn't look a lot different uh, at the moment. Reverse sear is kind of, it's a little bit like sous vide. You know, it'll kind of look a little bit anemic at the end, but when we finally put it on the hot coals at the, at the end, it should be, should be banging. Now here's my little tip with uh, if you've got the meter on and you want to continue monitoring, uh, push the probe through the foil. So can you see it sticking out there? If you leave it inside the foil, it will cut off the signal. So you should be able to continue to see that and that little hole won't make a lot of difference. Now David's got the tricky task of setting up for, if you hook it over the handle, yeah. Not used to the expander system, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, you can put that anywhere up there, that's fine. And then there's that cast iron uh, plancher there for you if, if you want to do the steak on that. Yeah. Now these are, um, yeah, you you might fall in, but you'll find out. <laughs> this is the tricky bit, it's cold, so. You're trying to trick me again. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> They're the most difficult, that's the, they've got this, um, if I show you, you've got this little lip on them here uh, that's supposed to hook on, but it's not, it doesn't always hook, and I, I have dropped one in. Um, so now what we want to do is crank that up, obviously. So open up the top, it's gone wide up here, uh, and then open the bottom, which is wide open anyway. Um, and that will now start to heat that up, ready to do the, the sear bit. Um, so, you see. Yeah, we're slowly coming together. Yeah. So I'm just probably gonna take these off now. I reckon they're done. Oh, looking good. Yeah, that looks nice. And there's a trivet on the table, on the, at the main yeah, main table. If you want to do them over there, yes, get the other glove on. There are. I think so. There's four out here somewhere. <laughs> so bless him. This is it. You know, this isn't David's kitchen. He's doing well. So, uh, although he did come on a class here, so oh, yeah. I came and okay. played on one of the classes. I think he knows more than I do, but you know. I don't know about that. <laughs> Yeah, we don't often do live cooks, but we do share a lot of hints and tips and, you know, different ideas. We always like to experiment. We've been doing lamb baking recently. That's been quite fun. Um, I'll let you know how that goes. He's left some with me yeah. to have a try. I haven't done it yet, but uh, it won't be long. Possibly this evening, tomorrow morning. Yeah. We tried a few um, dry aged experiments. We tried to do dry aged pastrami. That was quite an interesting one. Didn't didn't really add much flavour so again I wouldn't I wouldn't go to your butcher and buy a really expensive 60 day dry aged brisket and then turn it into pastrami it's not worth it <laughs> those are some of the experiments that we'll do um, like bacon pork ribs that's quite good put a baking cure on them for a few days that's pretty that's a pretty good one that we yeah Miles today. from the Gogs gave me some bacon bacon ribs once yeah yeah I think he experiments with that as well yeah they are looking good. Look at those beans. Lovely mash. So he's just squidging it down, making it into a mash. This will stay hot for ages. Okay. It will in that cast iron pan. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then just for, a, mainly for a little bit of colour, you know, you can use parsley, you can use uh, some coriander, just so it's not just a white blob. You know, we can add a little bit of herb to it and it will just make it pop a little bit. Add a little bit of flavour, obviously, but 
just makes it look a bit nicer. That looks lovely. Okay. Back in. So the next thing we'll do, we just need to make the glaze uh, for the cabbage. How are we doing for time? Uh, we are at. Uh, you got? got yeah, got be good. Oh, pack in. So we've got butter going into our little pan, which is probably still hot. Yeah, yeah, it's melting nice and quickly. <laughs> so we're going to pop that onto the egg that we're putting on. So you can see that's only been maybe three or four minutes and it's gone from 110 to 200. So real quick, just open those vents. The key to that is to make sure your egg's clean. Um, if your egg won't get up to temperature quickly, it's because it's not clean. Uh, simple as that. Um, so, you know, get the ash out, take the insides out. And if I come around, I'm going to come the other side of you, David, just yep. to just to show you. Look in here, it is roaring now. Uh, it's going nicely. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So basically all, we, all we're doing, we're just waiting for that butter to melt. Um, it'll go a little bit foamy. We're going to sort of get it to almost a brown butter, but get it nice and hot, get it nice and foamy. It'll release some nutty aromas. Um, and then we're going to add in the chilli, so that burnt chilli that we did, we're going to add in some fresh chilli um, and then we're going to add in the pistachios and it's all going to sort of bloom and just be absolutely delicious when we dress it over the cabbage later on. Um, talking of the cabbage, I might just drain that off now. Ah, oh, just do it with your hands. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah, fine. It will soon dry out. Oh yeah. And again, it's, it's fine if it's a little bit wet still, because um, it's going to help steam it as well as char it. So I so say you don't need to be too precious and like really cook the hell out of it in the parboil, just, just to take the edge off. You can see it's a little bit, it's floppy, but it's firm. <laughs> Easy tiger. Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might get some different viewers if you put that oh, hashtag yeah. in there. <laughs> Sorry. There we go, so the, the butter's starting to melt, that's looking nice. Pop that there for now. Have we got any questions, Helena? Uh, no, no. Okay. I'll just ask one about the mash, what beans did we use? We used cannelloni beans for the mash, uh, but you could use bolotti beans, so okay. I'm told. Yeah. Um, because I went out and bought them especially and then he, and then he opted for the cannellonis. I changed my mind. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can use all sorts. Any other questions, people? How are you liking this format? Uh, a bit different today. Um, oh, we've oh, thanks for that, people. Apparently, we've had requests for Andrea back on the camera. Um, is that because she's better looking than me, or am I just rubbish? <laughs> I'm going to take it. I'm rubbish. Oh yeah, chickpeas would work. Yeah, same same sort of thing. Um, yeah, just uh, as long as they're cooked enough to sort of be able to mash down a little bit, absolutely fine. Whatever you've got in the cupboard, really, it's just uh, an extra nice element. We've all done mashed potato, you know, that's been done to, you know, a million times. So it's just fun to play around. Most people have got a tin of beans, uh, you know, sitting in the cupboard somewhere. So yeah, just nice to do something a little bit different. So this is look, really like kicking along nicely now. So I'm just going to add some dry chilli, the fresh chilli and the pistachios in. Perfect. And I'm going to take it off the heat. Yeah. Um, Put it so on I'm the... just going to allow that to bloom a bit. Yeah. Put it on the trivet if you can. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to add all of these. I'll add that much maybe. I'll add the pistachio. <laughs> You know it's oh well played. I thought that was going everywhere. Well, I'll try not to. So that much will probably do. And then a little bit of the got dry some dried food. chili. Where's our dried chili gone? Was, oh, there's a little dish. Yeah. <laughs> Helena's doing her her usual. She's really good at this, clearing up as we go and. Uh, <laughs> Oh, oh right. yeah, she's cleared it up before it's even, even, uh, so we got yes, thank you. a few little chilli flakes there, we'll get those in. 
again it'll be quite strong but we only use a little bit of it at the end as a dressing so Lovely. don't be afraid to uh to be brave right we've left that egg open by the way yeah i know yeah, yeah that's cool david do you know Arthur's barbecue oh yeah yes. <laughs> he's, a good, he's a good lad yeah he thinks you're very handsome <laughs> <laughs> I definitely didn't pay anybody uh, beforehand. Um, so these these will basically take longer than the steak to char up. So it's nice and hot. We're just going to pop these straight on. I see this is a really nice dish. It, it really gives it a good flavour from the char. So we're going to allow them to go a little bit black. Sounds great. That's not me just saying it in case I forget it. Yeah. We do want them a little bit a little bit charred. Oh, I've got another David is so handsome again. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Same person, though, unfortunately. Oh, well. <laughs> right, we've got our beans, we've got our onions. Yeah, so let's maybe chop up the onions and give those cabbages a couple of minutes. Once they're charred on one side, we'll turn them over and then we'll add the steak on and then it should all come together into a, a dish at the end. Spot on. So. so you can pretty much squeeze these straight out. Mm. That is making me hungry. Mm. So again, this will just be a topping uh, on top of the uh, the beans. So these are just lovely because they're kind of steam, smoke, barbecue. So they're really soft, really glossy. Yeah, they get sort of sticky, don't they, and yeah, sweet. Yeah, like jammy almost. Yeah. So it just, it's just a nice topping and a nice bit of texture um, on top of that mash. There you go. And maybe just a touch of a olive touch. oil, just a touch. Oh showing off now he's doing his chef stuff <laughs> i'll take that piece out we don't need that there you go so that's basically that finished beautiful the dressing's finished look at that and all we're waiting for now is the charred cabbage and the steak so let's go and have a look because it mm. is running nice and hot it is running hot we're at 262 70 degrees here um, so do burp it Keep your glove on. I will do. I've seen you in action. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got hairy arms as a barbecue, you know, you're obviously doing something wrong. <laughs> oh, a bit more, mate. Yeah. That one you could do a bit more. So, so again, if I not... zoom in, they're just starting to char at the ends. Um, they do take a little while, but. Yeah, it should take longer than the uh, than the steak. And again, even if the outer leaf gets really charred up, it's going to protect the leaves that are underneath it. So again, don't like I said, don't be scared to uh, really give it a good char. So these won't take too long just because it's at a nice high temperature. Give that another couple of minutes. And are you a, a rest your steak after it comes off or a not rest your steak after it comes off? Uh, well, with reverse sear, because it's such a gentle cook, you technically don't need to rest it. You are going to rest it between taking it off and doing the final sear. If I was doing it sort of uh, direct grilling, or if I was cooking it in the oven, or if I was doing it any other way, then yes, I'd rest it for a good, you know, 10 minutes. Well, they say like half the cooking time, but it depends how long your cooking time is. But I'd always rest it for five, 10 minutes. The, the idea is under high heat, the muscles will get quite tight. They contract, don't yeah. they? Yeah, and squeeze so they, the liquid out. So they need a few minutes just to relax after cooking. So definitely rest, just not with reverse sear. Okay. I don't know if you agree. I, well, so I, the reason I ask the question is there's a, uh, a guy called uh, Meathead Goldwyn um, who writes uh, uh, on a website called amazingribs.com. Oh, yes, yeah. And he has posted an article recently about how you don't need to rest meat at all. Um, the juices coming out will get reabsorbed by the meat when you cut it. Um, and so he has posted a, a picture of a plate that wasn't rested and one that was, and there's less juice on the plate that wasn't rested than, than the plate 
of the state that was rested. Hmm. So interesting article. Um, it's a great website, by the way, amazingribs.com. Oh, yeah, they've got some good um, tips and recipes. Yeah, so if you're into the science behind cooking, hmm. which I am, um, I love that site. And, and his book. It's, uh, his book's called Meat. Uh, uh, called Meathead, I think. I think that's one of the things. Like you, you're always learning and you're always trying out new things. So yeah, give it a go. Tell us what you think. Does rest in it make a difference or does it not? It's one of those things you're always told to do. So you always do it. Let's have a little look. Uh, not yet. We could go on a lower, lower. That help? Yeah, I think so. So this, uh, now, I'm, do you want? Look, shall I do it? I'll let go you. Go ahead. You take you take the camera, and I'll I'll move this. So because uh, this is the tricky thing. Uh, I need the other glove. Yeah, with the expander system that we're using, um, if you really want a nice, a good sear, and I should probably. In fact, let me take this one out first. That'll be make it easier. Um, you can put it a bit lower down. So I'm just going to pop this one here for a set. I'm going to rest it on the stage. Get that one down, and we'll go then down a layer. Um, and that will help just by putting it a little bit nearer the um, flame it will get a better sear so we'll do that yeah cracking um, that might help david a little bit uh, but yeah these gloves you can do that sort of thing without burning yourself um, so yeah we'll close that off give it a couple of minutes <clears throat> as soon as, as soon as it's charred on one side we'll throw on the steak and we're pretty much ready to go perfect any yeah. questions helena so guys, uh, ask questions, you know, ask questions, ask around aging of meat. Um, you know, David um, has spent a lot of time learning about aging. He's got a beautiful aging machine or fridge or whatever you call it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you've got questions around that, do ask. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm keen to, to see some of the other stuff he's done. Um, we, we're going to cook, uh, we might cook this uh, little, well, yeah, well, let's cook it, the Wagyu. We could chuck that on now. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do the Wagyu, yeah. So... Um, there you go. We'll get your knife. Oh, you've got the knife. So we're gonna. This is a. Um, so tell us how you whiskey so aged it. So it's a little bit different. So for the whiskey aging, you need something for the whiskey to stick onto. So we tend to wrap it in a in a nice clean muslin cloth. Um, you then pour whiskey over the top. So you really saturate it to start with. So if it's not expensive enough having Wagyu, then add a nice bottle of whiskey on top of it as well. It, <laughs> it does get quite expensive, but you know, why not? <laughs> yeah, treat yourself once treat in a while. Yourself. Um, so yeah, so basically it will start to dry out and the idea is the alcohol evaporates, but the, um, the flavour of the whiskey goes into the meat. So Nick, I don't oh, know if you want to have a smell. Yeah. You can smell the notes. Cool, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Right, let's have a little look. That should be nice and hot. Do you want a bit of oil? Have you? Yeah, we'll you, put a little bit of oil. Uh, it's on the table. Sorry, this is cameraman being sous chef, being everything at the moment. <laughs> so I'll give you that. Yeah. I'll oil the steak, not the pan. So this shouldn't take too long to cook. So if you look, there's a tiny bit of oil on there. So he's just putting it on both sides. Right, and then it will ready? go straight onto the very hot. You can hear that. Looking oh, good. My yeah. Shall I pull the lid shut for a sec? Okay. Were you happy? I was just going to flip those and see what Okay. Like. Um, right. Yes. yes. <laughs> so the question was, do you chop the outside of the aged meat to remove the white mould? Yes, you do. Yeah. Uh, so that's why David was saying earlier, you know, if you do a bigger bit of meat, um, then you've got less waste. Yeah. So there's a thing called the pellicle. That's a crust that forms on the outside of the piece of meat. And it's like a, a really oh. hard piece of, uh, of skin. So I'm just showing them the cabbage, yeah. Oh, would you that's season hot. the wagyu before putting it on? Would you season the wagyu before putting it on? We didn't. Um, 
you definitely don't want to season with pepper pepper will burn so only ever season and look here goes here goes the other piece now this is really hot steaming hot look at that that's a great photo um so i only ever salt my meat uh before i cook it um i noticed david hasn't done that yeah i just um, just for peppery i thought we'd season it we'll afterwards. season it afterwards so there you go um oh they're both looking he's a lid open man this guy <laughs> well that'll cook really yeah quickly. yeah yeah there's so much fat in that wagyu it it, do, it does cook it that is looking in fact i'm gonna yeah. take that off already yeah let me let me i'm gonna come around you i'm just gonna zoom in on that just to show you that is a stunning looking piece of beef Oh, they're looking great. That's what we're looking for, a real nice char. It gives it such a good amount of flavour. Okay, so um, Paul White has asked, what's the ballpark cost of one of the ageing machines? And it <laughs> <laughs> Paul, um, you don't want one. You can't, well, you probably can afford one, but um, <laughs> yeah. So tell, tell us the list price of the one you have. Uh, so eBay is your friend. So we didn't pay full price. I'm not going to tell you what we did pay, <laughs> um, but they can go from like from a couple of grand upwards. So they, they are an expensive piece of equipment. It was that or a new motorbike. So Mrs. Spice Punch said, "You having a fridge?" <laughs> <laughs> She's shaking her head vigorously here, saying, "I said nothing of the sort." But anyway, <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to follow the meat here. Yeah, look. The meat. yeah, look at that. The cabbage is looking fabulous. We've got some beautiful meat here. Uh, our beans are sitting there looking great. David's just finishing off over there. We've got our dressing. We've got some spare onions that we'll use for something else. It's always good to put a few extras in, but let's look at that. 150 day dry aged piece of beef, sirloin. And this is a 42 age whiskey aged uh, piece of Wagyu. Yeah. Fabulous. So if we play, if I do one plate. Yeah. Because uh, I know we're running out of time. You're good. You're good. So you've got eight minutes. That's all right. <laughs> Before the camera cuts off. That's all it is. That's all right. So we've got our cabbage. Get our bean puree. My stomach's rumbling. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll just move these out of the way. Yeah. They look great. So this should be... Oh, yes. Oh, the smell. Oh, sorry guys, you can't smell this, but that smells incredible. It's always it's always a pleasure to cook it as well. You ju I just got a, a massive whiff of that dry <laughs> aging. Just as he started cutting it, yeah. the wind changed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That was handy. Those. Look at that. That should be a photo. Look at that. We'll obviously yeah. add a bit of salt on the end. Just excuse me, getting in your shot. That's all right. You can do whatever you want. That looks amazing. Or should we do salt boat? No, oh, no, no. Salt bay. No. <laughs> Okay, a little bit of salt on the steak. A little bit of seasoning on top of the other items. We've got our chilli dressing. It's cold enough now. That looks incredible. Yeah, it really, it's really nice because you've got a little bit of crunch from the, uh, from the nuts and just gorgeous. So let's pick a nice piece of this. This is, this is your your plate, so yeah. <laughs> oh wow! Well, <in> goes... <laughs> look at it! Look at him go! <laughs> there you go. That's the finished dish. Perfect. That go. is incredible. Let's have a last look at that. So, David, thank you so much. Oh yes, don't forget that. Look at that. Oh, 
Go on, Nick. You might as well have a taste. Sorry, gonna have this. Ah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Talking in a mouthful. You can really get the whiskey on the outside. Mmm. You say it was only like a three, four minute cook. Mm. It is pink, but you can see it's, uh, no, it's, it's almost like a sh charcuterie. It's perfect. Right, that is stunning. So you've got a, you've got a clap there from Barbecue Bill. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we've got, um, we have, let's go back through it. So we've sure. got some uh, hispy cabbage with a burnt chili and pistachio dressing. We have our 150 day dry aged um, sirloin. sirloin. We've got our white bean mash with burnt onions or with uh, charcoal dirty onions. And then we have some beautiful uh, Wagyu. So whiskey, 42 day whiskey aged Wagyu. That's it. We're gonna eat like kings. Should be good. Yeah, so I'm gonna flip you back round. So, um, oh dear, sorry, can we just have one? Thank you. <laughs> artist you've said it so Helen has just said it so Cheers, yeah <laughs> I know you two guys are great friends so uh um thank you David for coming it's been brilliant thank you Catherine as well in the background and Helena for helping so hopefully you've enjoyed this slightly different session and um, we've overrun a little bit but it was great fun um so it doesn't matter so yeah thank you you can get in contact with us so at spice punch yeah um, so do follow him on uh, Insta and all the other social media. Uh, again, Nick at Meat Smoke Fire. Um, we thoroughly enjoyed today. Uh, hopefully you have, and we will see you next week. Um, oh. Well, David might not, but uh, unless he's totally hooked on it. As long as, long as I didn't overcook the steak, yeah. I was happy, and they look good. <laughs> they look amazing. So, um, so yeah, we'll see you all next week. I have no idea what next week's going to be. So. Um, send us through your ideas on the web page. Uh, there's a form, just fill it in. Um, we will eventually do a whole cook on just one egg. Um, so that I think that was Andy a couple of weeks ago asked for that and, and has done before. So we'll sort that out. But for now, thank you and we'll see you soon. Cheers, guys. Bye.